Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna compare all three of these Netgear Orbi mesh systems to each other. I'm gonna talk about their specs, ports. I've done a whole bunch of speed test range tests. We'll go over all those numbers. I'll show you guys the interface for the Orbi and I'll give you guys my opinion at the end, which one is worth getting and why. And just throughout, I do get questions that uh, basically ask like, hey, should I get a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system if I only have one device or an old devices and things like that. And I kinda wanna just, go over the differences between the different Wi-Fi generations just to show you guys that you don't necessarily need to have a Wi-Fi 7 device to go with the 970 for instance because uh, there are other advantages even if you don't have any Wi-Fi 7 uh, devices. So we'll answer all of that at the end. Stick around, subscribe if you guys haven't already. Let's get started. So we have the 860 series, again Wi-Fi 6, the 960 series Wi-Fi 6E, and the 970 series Wi-Fi 7. I have individual videos on all of these, and these two I have very recently retested because when I had run my original testing on these, my internet speeds were capped to gigabit. Um, just under gigabit technically uh, and ever since then I have upgraded my internet speed to 5 gigs so I wanted to make a fair comparison. I also hadn't tested these with Wi-Fi 7 devices so I retested both of these just so we're in the same ballpark. I didn't need to retest the 970 uh, just because even if I tested with the newer devices I would have got very similar numbers. So we'll start with the 860 series but just as a heads up all the Orbeez are very similar because they all come with a dedicated router and if you get a 2 or 3 pack the rest of them are dedicated satellites like this one. So we'll start with the router. We have a 10 gigabit ethernet port that you would hook up to the internet access, basically your WAN, uh, that would be your modem, your ONT or your DSL or whatever you use to get internet access. The rest of these are gigabit ports and we have a factory reset right here and we have the power port and we have a sync button um, and that's pretty much it right there. Uh, the satellite looks exactly the same except it has four gigabit ports right here and we have a factory reset and we have a power port. Now the only issue with this Orbi, just worth mentioning, is we only have one very fast 10 gigabit port. So as soon as it goes in, when you come out, you are going to come out at gigabit speed. So the 10 gig port is not super useful in this situation. Next we have the 960 series and again one router, one satellite, if you get a three pack you get two satellites. So let's start with the router. We have the same sync button, we have a 10 gig ethernet port. We have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port that you could use as your backhaul and we have three other gigabit ports. We have the power port right there and again we have a factory reset and it's pretty similar in shape to the 860 series. It's kind of like the bigger brother basically. Uh, so very similar in terms of shape and obviously the colors. Uh, and as far as the satellite, you do get a 2.5 gigabit right here. We get three gigabit ports. We have the factory reset, we have the power port and the sync button. And again, these look identical. So I actually have to look at the ports to know which one the router is and which one the satellite is. Now this one has a an advantage right out the gate. Uh, versus the 860 series because you have a 2.5. So if you have internet speeds faster than 2.5, you will be capped to 2.5 on the satellites. But that is better than being capped to gigabit on the satellite. And finally, we get to the best of the best, which is the 970 series. Again, dedicated router, dedicated satellite. If you get a three pack, you get two satellites. So let's start with the router. We have a sync button, factory reset. We get four 2.5 gigabit ports. We get a 10 gigabit port right here you can use for backhaul and we get a 10 gigabit port that you would plug in to your modem or NT, basically internet access. And we have the power port right here. It is massive in case you guys are wondering, slightly taller than the 960 series. But again, both of these are actually very, very large, very large mesh systems. One of the largest ones. Um, a lot bigger than the standard ones. Okay, now let's go over the satellite. So the satellite is fairly similar. We got 2.5 gigabit ports right here, two of those. We get a 10 gigabit port right here. Again, power, sync, factory reset. Now, right off the bat, other than the fact that this supports Wi-Fi 7, this thing can actually give a full 10 gig LAN. So if you have 10 gigabit internet speeds, you can actually get that because it will go the internet will come in as 10 gig, it'll go out at 10 gig and enter here at 10 gig. And if you have an, a 10 gig switch, 
you could actually, you know, go internet would go here. You would go out from this to a 10 gig switch. And then that 10 gig switch can connect to this one, which is pretty much how I have my stuff wired. And so you can actually get a 10 gig LAN. So that's the biggest advantage between the 970 versus the other two that you can actually keep a full 10 gig LAN. Now we have the power supply. So all three of these are 100 to 120 volts. The 860 series takes the least amount of power at 42 watts. So the output's 12 volts at three and a half amps. If you multiply those two numbers, you get 42 watts. I labeled these myself because I have a lot of mesh systems um, and it would get confused if, if I didn't label them. The 960 and 970 series are both 60 watts. They're pretty much identical um, in terms of uh, pretty much power, power plug, everything's um, specs wise. They, they pretty much look identical to each other, um, size and shape as well. Um, the 860 is slightly different but I mean still very similar shape very similar size um, and again the 960 970 they have the same uh, power plug the 860 is a little bit different again takes a little less power now for testing environments I do have around 80 or so devices a bunch of IOT devices smart home devices basically security cameras things like that laptops tablets phones uh, a bunch of Ethernet devices as well not a bunch but several several most of my stuff is actually Wi-Fi, uh, but I do have some Ethernet devices. Okay, so aside from that, all three of these are very stable. In fact, when I originally got the 970 series, I did have to play with the settings a bit because it wasn't super stable at the very, very beginning. But then there was a firmware update after that as well, and it's been super stable uh, since then. I did run it for at least a month or so after that, and all three of these are basically very stable. Next, we jump into internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, unless, of course, the router itself can't go that fast. Now, all three of these right off the bat support up to 10 gigabit speed, so in theory, they should support it, right? Well, the problem is some of these only have one fast port. So with the 860 series, we only have one 10 gigabit port. So when my internet source comes from my ONT, which is kind of like a modem for fiber optic users. So when my ONT goes to the router and goes to the 10 gigabit port, well, when it comes out of the router, it's coming out at the gigabit port. So my internet gives it five gig speeds and it comes out as gigabit. So when I do an internet speed test on my computer that's hooked up via ethernet, I'm actually capping myself to gigabit speed. So those are the speeds that I get. With the 960 series, I actually cap myself to 2.5 gigabit speeds because again, my internet source goes in at five and it can handle it because it can support up to 10, but it comes out as 2.5. So right off the bat, both of these are actually capping my internet speeds. Whereas with the 970, because it can go in at five and come out as five, when I do a speed test, I actually get those full five gig speeds that I'm paying for. So in my case, I would only consider this from these three choices because this is the only one that can actually give me a full uh, five gig. Now the Wi-Fi devices are a different story. So as you guys can see from the numbers, there is a huge difference, especially with the Wi-Fi 7 device. Now, in case you guys are wondering, I could get a Wi-Fi 7 device. It is backwards compatible with the Wi-Fi 6 mesh system. I can get a Wi-Fi 6E device. It is backwards compatible with a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system or forwards compatible, whatever it is. But basically, the Wi-Fi 7 mesh system is backwards compatible with the Wi-Fi 6E uh, device. In case you guys are wondering, um, typically Wi-Fi standards are backwards compatible uh, with each other. But it, obviously in order to get the full benefits of the Wi-Fi 7 device, I do need to connect it to a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system like the Orbi 970 to actually see that because this one actually supports MLO, which is multi-link operation, which allows this device to connect to more than one band at the same time. And that's why you're actually seeing these crazy fast speeds. Next, we jump into the local speed test. And the reason we do this is to find out the true performance of the mesh system because now I'm not relying on my internet speeds nor the public speed test server. So I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And for wireless and wired backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which jumps to the router, which then goes to the computer. So this way, I basically isolate the mesh system, and this usually results in better speeds. Now, for the 860 series, it's not a huge difference. There obviously is an improvement in speeds, but again, not huge. Uh, there is a bigger difference for the 960 series, a bigger 
uh, step up, especially in the upload sections, uh, especially for the Wi-Fi 7 upload section. And then for the Wi-Fi 7 device, there is also an improvement, but not a huge difference between the internet speeds and the local speeds, other than the upload section and the Wi-Fi 7 device. Now for all three of these, we did get very similar numbers for the wired backhaul. Again, with the 860 series, you know, you are capped to the gigabit speeds essentially. With the 960, you're capped to the 2.5 gigabit speeds essentially. And with the 970 series, you're actually capped to 10 gigabits, but now the Wi-Fi 7 devices can't go that fast. So now actually the Wi-Fi 7 device is the cap itself, and these are the speeds that you're seeing. Now for wireless backhaul, all three of these did really well, overall speaking. But obviously the 970 series is winning here as well. This is the major thing. So this is one of the questions I, I get asked is that, is it worth getting a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system, you know, even if I don't have a Wi-Fi 7 device? And part of the answer to saying yes is that you actually get really good wireless backhaul speeds with the Wi-Fi 7 devices. Now, if your internet speeds are up to gigabit, then it's kind of pointless to get it because, you know, both of these can pretty much get you those numbers very close to it. Um, so there's that. Next, we get into range. Now, range will vary vastly by location. If you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, uh, essentially more obstructions equals less range is what I'm trying to say. So all three of these are tested in the same environments. And again, results will vary drastically by location. Now, I tested all three of these up to 100 feet, which is 30 meters, and all three of these can go further than that, but I am capping my speeds to that range. At 20 feet away, we are getting some solid numbers for all three of these, hardly a drop for all three of these. At 50 feet, I'm outside my place, uh, still getting some very good numbers, but obviously, the 970 is taking the cake, again, because it can support the fastest speeds, and at 100 feet, again, the 970 still took the cake, but... What was surprising was that the 860 overall beat the 960 series at the 100 feet mark. So, um, but all three of these very solid. The fact that I can use it across the street um, is very, very good. For setup and configuration, use the Orbi app for all three of these. It's available both on iOS and on Android. Very simple to use app, very simplified interface, tells you what to connect where. Uh, during setup, it tells you like, oh, disconnect your modem, connect this, wait until you get a white light, once it's stable, then connect to it, and uh, pretty much tells you step by step. So very easy to use, and when you're done, very simplified. Um, very minimalistic uh, interface, so you could uh, set up your Wi-Fi settings, your uh, guest Wi-Fi settings, you could do a speed test, look at some analytics, um, and there's a few other options in there, but you're pretty much very limited what you could do. You could check for updates within the firmware as well. And whatever I'm saying is true for all three of these. Um, and I think Netgear's goal with that was to pretty much make it as simple as possible. But if you do want additional options, you could go to orbilogin.net. Now, when you go there, obviously you have to go there with a computer that's connected via Ethernet or uh, a Wi-Fi device that's connected via Wi-Fi to the network. So you do need to be connected to the network to go to that. Uh, but when you go there, there's way more options there, way more customization. Um, so a lot more things you can do um, within orbilogin.net versus the Orbi app. Which mesh system is worth getting and why? Well, right off the bat, all three of these are fantastic for different situations. In my case, I would get the 970 because my internet speeds, again, are five gigs up and down. And if I got these two, I would actually be capping my speeds. Uh, but if my internet speeds were up to gigabit, I probably would go for this one because this one has some solid wireless backhaul numbers, uh, especially if I was doing wireless backhaul. I mean, this thing is really, really solid. If I had internet speeds faster and I was gonna do wireless backhaul, I'd probably would get the 970. But if I was doing wired backhaul for up to two gigs, 2.5 gigabits, then this is the one I would consider. And finally, if I was faster than that, then this is the one I would consider. But again, it really depends on your situation. What are you trying to do? And also, are you trying to set up a separate 10 gig LAN that maybe your internet speeds are up to gigabit, but within your local network, you want to get a 10 gig LAN going uh, between different switches, things like that. So it really kind of comes down to which one is right for you. 
But right off the bat, all three of these are fantastic mesh systems. This one is fantastic up to gigabit. This one's fantastic up to 2.5. And this one's fantastic up to 10 gigabits. So with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section as well. Do you guys have this? Are you guys considering getting one? And yeah, I'm genuinely curious. So with that said, thank you guys for watching. Smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.